Katamari Damacy One of Japan's weirdest and finest game has to offer for its time on the PS2. And I'm not saying this out of a personal thing, but apparently, it actually received a lot of positive praises of it before, that it ends up receiving a ton of awards, and created several other sequels and spin-off titles after it. Who knew that the rolling ball and the wacky parts of the game would end up creating a memorable creative game overall? But how exactly is the game that good? I grew up playing this game back then and wanted to revisit this good old game on the PS2. I know that there's the re-roll version of the game, but I wanted to stick with the first original version of the game instead. This is K1PM. Today, I'll be doing a full review of Katamari Damacy. I'll be talking more in depth about the game and pointing out the pros and the cons of it. The game was developed and published by Namco, the well-known giants of the gaming industry in Japan. Even before the merging with Bandai as Bandai Namco today, they've developed and published a lot of games in the past that was quite popular back in the days. Now, Katamari Damacy on the other hand had its fair share of fame for the PS2. It won several awards in Japan and North America, unfortunately not in Europe and Australia. Considering the game didn't manage to make its release over there, due to marketing reasons of labeled as too quirky, even though they allowed this game to even exist there in Europe. Although, I guess I could understand what they mean by quirky. If you've seen the game's intro video like this, you'd be probably asking yourself if you're high or something. But they should at least consider the whole game itself. They've been missing it out. The story of the game can be a bit weirdly funny in a way. Right from the very beginning of the game, an opening shows a giant man appears to be destroying the stars and the moon. It turns out that man is the king of all Cosmo himself, who destroys parts of the galaxy from his very own whims. Cause why not, right? He apparently even loves doing it. Well, I guess that's just how a god does, you know? Now the prince, as in the player, has to clean up the king's mess by creating new stars, comets, a moon, and constellations for the universe, made from a lot of different stuffs in Earth. And that's where the fun actually begins. The game is quite simple. As the prince, you gotta roll this ball called Katamari in order to collect a ton of objects around the area. Depending on the stage, the size and the color changes whether you'll start out really small in a household environment or at a meter size to start out rampaging on the streets much earlier. Each stages of the game has an incredible amount of objects laying around the area. You could stick on the Katamari almost everything on earth, with the right size of course depending on the object. From those little pushpins, rats crawling around, and vegetables to pluck on, to buildings, islands, and even gods and clouds in a game. It's actually crazy how far the game actually goes. It ends up feeling like a game without any boundaries from how far I could go. Well, except at this point, but it's pretty much alright though. Especially considering how huge the place can be. Although, it kinda lacks a bit of variety when it comes to stages over time, that's for sure. The challenging part of the game is the obstacles along the way. They end up ruining my ball streak from a lot of different things that I encountered. Not to mention there are a few times I end up getting stuck in certain specific stages at a specific size that is. This is a bit frustrating considering there is a time limit in between stages, but for most cases, it's pretty much alright considering it doesn't always happen. You can unlock the endless mode playing the game without a timer to enjoy the moment. The downside, you can only get them when doing a great job at a specific stages. Personally, it wasn't a problem for me considering I've done a great job for most stages, but they should at least consider that option to be unlocked much easier for the other players to enjoy. There are also some other different challenges of collecting specific objects, like collecting a bunch of crabs on the cancer stage or gathering twin pairs at a Gemini stage. There's also challenges like searching for the biggest bear possible. While the place is littered with traps around the area, they can actually be creative within the stages based on real-life constellations. 
with all the silly comments that the king makes throughout the game, it's actually refreshing that he appears on a regular basis, although his lines can be a bit stale over time. It kinda ends up being too repetitive in the end. But I do love his whimsical weird character that greets me in a different language on each of the different stages, while secretly does this weird sets of poses during in a game over part of the game. It's actually funny how he does these things while I'm playing the game. I'm still wondering where's the queen though. You can see the queen on the intro stage of the game, but I can't actually see her on the game itself. I'm not sure if this is a cut content that they've decided to pull it out. For most stages in the game, the king gives the player some presents, but always drops them on earth. It's a bit of a challenge to find them on a single stage, with only a single clue given. The rewards of it, however, can be actually decent, having more clothes to wear for the prince to use on. You know, for just vanity clothes if you just wanna. It doesn't add any strengths or such weaknesses, but it's a plus to have it there. There's also the multiplayer mechanic in the game, where you could choose any of the character over here. I wish I could show the gameplay footage of it, but unfortunately, I can't for now since I don't have anyone to play with at the moment. But I've seen video clips of the multiplayer online, and it's actually alright, I guess. It's a bit unfortunate how small the arena can be. It's not the best multiplayer kind of minigame they made over here. Surprisingly, what actually kept me going in the game is not only because of the gameplay, but this bizarre perspective on the story what actually got me invested. I know that it's not great, it's actually really simple, but it's so weird for me that it got me really curious about it. Overall though, it's pretty much alright, it's nothing that amazing. Except on the credit parts of the game, I actually like I could roll up the countries and continents in Earth. During in a credits roll, it's actually a nice sight for me to see. When it comes to the art style and graphics in a game, there are three things that I could easily describe it. Simple, cute, and bizarre at the same time. It doesn't have the best graphics for a PS2 game, considering the ton of insane amount of objects laying around, but its overall design fits absolutely well with the game's theme. Pair it up with the game's bubbly fitting soundtrack, I end up really enjoying the game throughout my whole playthrough of it. You don't get this much quality for a weird Japanese game such as this. Not to mention how creative the main menu looks like. I have my own little world over here, that I could travel around the different parts of this small space, looking at the things that I've managed to collect and accomplish over the past playthrough of mine. The forming of the stars, constellations, and even the moon over here. I was even surprised that the stuffs I managed to get on every part of the stage ends up having an actual 2D image rendition out of it. They've really thought about the game that much, and that's what you call quality. Despite how simple it is, they've really top on the notch. That's why I give this game a rating of 8.4 out of 10. Usually when a weird game like this to exist, it only ends up having an alright enjoyment out of it, polishing off the main mechanic of the game and then leaving out the rest of the problem. But Katamari Damacy on the other hand went farther from the rest of it. The developers didn't only take advantage of the unique mechanic they've made, but how they've polished the game absolutely well. Although the multiplayer is a bit bland though, unfortunately. If you're looking for a unique good old game to play around with, Katamari Damacy is a great game to play. I'm actually glad that the game is accessible through Steam. You could actually purchase the polished ported version of the game there. And it actually looks decent. It's a better option if you're gonna play the Katamari series. For more videos such as these, why not head down to my channel to check things out? I do accurate game reviews of the past games and some other new ones too. If you want to support my channel, a subscribe would be nice. It kind of helps me out morally to be honest. This is K1PM and I bid you farewell.